I'm Danny Flex and welcome to the latest edition of Seconds Out Flex Expectations. We're here every Thursday at 4:30 p.m. to look ahead to some of the big fights coming up in the world of boxing. Um, normally, it's the weekend uh, immediately after the vlog that we talk about, but although there are still, despite the cancellation of Lopez Cambosos, three pretty prominent shows in the U.S. this weekend, I didn't want to concentrate on those predominantly. I've said predominantly twice in the first 10 seconds. Um, didn't want to concentrate on those because the uh, favourites are, are all significantly favoured to get the job done in uh, Noya Inoue, uh, Jamal Charlo and uh, Jamie Munguia, of course. Um, so I'm not going to focus too much on that. Um, but what I will talk about is Fight Camp because I was at the launch um, on Monday hosted by Eddie Hearn. And some members of the zone, including Joe Markovsky. You've probably seen some of the interviews already uh, with Hearn and Markovsky went live yesterday. I was particularly happy with that interview. He was a very credible guy, I thought, um, Joe. But let's look at the cards um, top to bottom of all three. They're currently, you can see the full lineup on our website, secondsout.com. Um, but you've probably heard the kind of main headlines already. I'm going to refer to our website as I go through, just to make sure I don't miss anything big out. Um, but it starts off on July 31st at Matchroom HQ. This time fans will be allowed. Um, apparently £750 per ticket, although that does include your food, your champagne for the night, for those of you who are that way inclined. Um, yeah, it's a very um, expensive way out of my price range for a, a night of entertainment, I've got to say. Um, but for those who can afford it, I'm sure it will be a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Now, the headline act on the first uh, show on July 31st is Conor Ben, who was lauded at the press conference on Monday for generating incredible numbers um, thus far on The Zone and on Sky Sports previously. Um, he'll be fighting Adrian Granados, who on paper, it looks like a bit of a step up from his last fight. But is it really? Um, Granados, very, very talented fighter, dogged, determined, um, has fought some really really good fighters uh, 140 and 147 pounds but therein kind of lies the rub he's not really big enough for 147 he's tended to get stopped by the better fighters when he's moved up in weight um generally we've seen his best performances come down at 140 um and i would expect Conor ben to just be a bit too big strong and persistent for him on the night i think granados as i said he is dogged and he will do his best to hang in there and, and make some inroads, but I just can't see him making too much of a dent in Ben, who is a big welterweight um, and is improving all the time. So, so good matchmaking there and, and potentially an entertaining fight. Best fight on the card, undoubtedly, for me anyway, on paper, is Tommy McCarthy against Chris Billum Smith. Three major belts at Cruiserweight, British, Commonwealth, European, um, and a fight that's been quite spicy in the build-up. They've been going back and forth. Um, Billum Smith, I think, feels that he's in McCarthy's head. McCarthy seems to have some sort of issue with uh, Billum Smith's trainer, Shane McGuigan. But it all adds to the narrative building up to the fight. Um, and I think uh, McCarthy's kind of technical skills against Billum Smith's more kind of pro style um, front foot counter punching, I think, would be really, really interesting how it comes together. Shannon Courtney is also making the first defence of her bantamweight world title on the bill. No opponent announced in the press release and certainly no opponent on the stage on Monday. Um, Courtney, I think it's very nice, to be honest, that Courtney complained vociferously about Rachel Ball pulling out of their rematch. Um, she seemed pretty um, dismissive of Ball. And I understand the frustration when someone's pulled out or withdrew more than once. But it's been well documented that Rachel Ball had a bad case of covid and is still suffering with the lingering effects of that somewhat six months later and we know now that long covid is a thing so i thought there could have been a bit more you know empathy there from courtney but that aside um it'll be interesting to see who they match her with um ebony bridges isn't you know the best opponent in the world against whom to win a world title you know it could have been a tougher challenge for shannon so maybe now we'll see her in a in a sterner test at fight camp one of my favourite fights across the whole fight camp series takes place on the first show as well. Um, and that's just because it's so random. Jack Cullen, Little Leavers, Meat Cleaver, who we've interviewed not too long ago on the channel. Um, looking for big fights then. Well, he's got one. 
um, Avni Yildirim, who was last seen in the ring losing to Canelo Alvarez for the world titles at super middleweight. So he might see it as a bit of a step down and fancy himself to be able to take care of Jack Cullen. But for Cullen, it's a huge opportunity to gate crash the world scene. Um, and yeah, just a completely random fight. But I think stylistically, you've got the kind of stocky, strong, aggressive Yildirim against the longer, um, technically skilled, but also packs a bit of a punch Cullen, um, as John Doherty would surely attest. So I'm really looking forward to that one. Uh, Anthony Fowler's on there as well um, against Roberto Garcia. I think, again, that's another example like Ben against Granados of good matchmaking. Garcia is someone who can give you rounds, who can kind of be a measuring stick for the world scene. He's fought, you know, Liam Smith and Martin Murray in the past. But Fowler should be fairly comfortable. He should be, you know, a level above in terms of all-round ability, especially at this stage in their respective careers. Uh, Campbell Hatton continues his development on the undercard. And Sandy Ryan, hugely talented former GB rep, um, Commonwealth Games champion or silver medalist. I have to double check that. I should have done it before the show. I feel like I say that every week. Um, she makes her debut on the show as well. So a very good start to Fight Camp. And then we move on to August the 7th. And that's headlined by something the first Fight Camp back in 2020 did not have. And that's a male world title fight as Jazza Dickens um, and Kid Galahad cross swords for a second time, albeit this one with the IBF featherweight strap on the line. Um, the first fight was, what, eight years ago now, and was won by stoppage, late stoppage by Galahad. And it was a really entertaining fight. I think it was on Channel 5, if memory serves me correctly. Really, really enjoyable contest. They've sparred a few times since, but as Jazza pointed out, and you can listen to this later today or it might already be on on uh, live by the time you uh, watch this we had some problems with some files on monday so it's audio only but it's well worth a listen jazza dickens talks about how much he's improved since that loss to galahad and how the two can never be friends um, because galahad defeated him he said he's not a big enough person to forgive that easily um, but yeah really really intriguing fight jazza's obviously coming off with great momentum having won the golden contract tournament galahad Won a final eliminator for this title um, last year. Looked pretty good in doing so as well. So, yeah, very, very good fight. A trade fight. I mean, it hasn't got the cachet of, say, Dillian White against Alexander Povetkin, which wasn't for a major world title um, last year. Um, and, and no result in Galahad Dickens would be as shocking as what Povetkin did um, at the end of fight camp last year. But let's bear in mind that was on Sky Sports box office and this is on zone, which will remain £1.99 per month in the UK, at least until the end of Fight Camp series. So that's something that we can be happy about. Um, also on that show, Fabio Wardley is apparently, it's a, according to the press release, taking another step up after his victory over Eric Molina. Not sure who that's going to be, but they've kind of put pressure on themselves by saying he's going to take another step up from someone who was a world title challenger who'd fought you know, Anthony Joshua, among others. So it's going to be interesting to see who they bring in for Wardley. Alan Babich is on the show against Mark Bennett. You'd expect Babich to do his usual thing and steamroll Bennett. Sorry, Mark. Uh, Florian Marku, Maxim Prodan. Uh, it's actually quite a good test for Marku. Prodan's unbeaten. Um, he's, he's kind of mixed in decent class. You would expect Marku to get the job done, but it's... it's I think you could say on paper it's his best opponent as a pro so far. And it looks like they are trying to test him. Uh, Ellie Scottney will make her third pro appearance also on that show. Um, no opponent for her yet. Um, Johnny Fisher fights Josh Sandland. If Sandland comes in the mood, because some, you know he's quite inconsistent, but if he comes in the mood, he could give the Romford ball a good test. Will he be the Matador? I'm not sure about that, but I think it'll be a good fight, especially considering it's only Sandland's third fight. Uh, Ebony Bridges, who I mentioned just now, also comes back. She fights Beck Connolly, who doesn't seem to be struggling much uh, during the pandemic, seems to be able to get fights. She won't be favoured to win, of course, but I think Beck will have a better chance against Bridges than she had against the debuting Ellie Scottney. So good luck to them. Um, probably the weakest of the three shows, albeit with the best main event um, for a world title. Perhaps that's why, you know, maybe it doesn't need a particularly good undercard. Um, but still, still a good value show. Like compared to, I've got to say this, compared to last week's show with Ritson against Ponce, which was pretty awful and it and was expected to be because it was the last show in the Matchroom Sky deal. Um, yeah, week two of Fight Camp is, is on another planet to that. So I, sh I shouldn't be so harsh. Compared to week one of Fight Camp, 
it's slightly disappointing. But overall, it's still a good, good show. Week three, um, Fight Camp concludes uh, August the 14th with a main event of Joshua Bratzi against Richard Bolotniks. Now, I suggested a while ago that Bolotniks would be a good opponent for Lyndon Arthur, predominantly because he's a known name in the UK. He's got good momentum from winning the Golden Contract Tournament. Higher WBO ranking, although Lyndon Arthur is now WBO number one, so he doesn't need a higher WBO ranking. Um, but also beatable, I would say. And I, I don't mean that disrespectfully. I think Bolotniks did very well to win the tournament. He's strong, he's tough, he obviously hits hard, he's persistent. Um, but there are gaps, there are flaws. He's not the most technically gifted, he's quite hittable. Um, but going, up, he needs to obviously go up against someone who can really punch. Um, but I think he's made for Buatzi. Buatzi knocking on the door of the world scene, now with Virgil Hunter. He's poised, he's sharp, he's a hard puncher. You know, he broke the orbital bone of Marco Kalic in what was his toughest test to date. He's been back out since against a bit pretty hapless opponent last time out. Um, but he'll be looking to make a statement. And um, if he gets past Bolotniks in good fashion, and I expect him to stop Bolotniks, um, then he will go on. Is it Bolotniks or Botolniks? I always think about this because I think Bolotnik isn't Bolotnik or Robotnik is one of the villains in the Sonic the Hedgehog uh, computer games. But I think it might be Botolniks, um, which means I've said it wrong about 50 times already. But that aside, um, I expect him to stop the uh, guy. And he'll, um, and he'll go on, hopefully, to a world title shot later this year or early next year. Um, also on that show, we've got Savannah Marshall making her second defence of her world title. But again, no opponent as yet um, for her. Uh, Raymond Ford fights Reese Bellotti. That's an interesting fight. Ford, a highly touted US prospect. Um, it hasn't been tested particularly as yet. Reese Bellotti, again, all the ability in the world, but it hasn't quite got his way in the big fights. He's changed trainers as well before. Um, when he gets some consistency, could he? Could this be a breakout win for him? Uh, we shall see. Uh, Michael McKinson fights Premislas Ronofsky. That's a good fight. Um, Ronofsky, we've seen before, of course. Not a big puncher, but neither is McKinson. Um, he'll hate me for saying that because I've asked him about it before. Um, but his record suggests he's not a massive puncher. I know he can hurt people, but he's always... This is it, right? So he might be a big puncher, but his style predicates that he's always on his toes, always moving, and never really sets his feet much to counter. And until that changes, he's unlikely to, to stop people because you need, you know, the power to drop him and then that relentless follow-up assault. And it's just not really his natural style. But he's doing very well. A great win over Chris Congo, obviously not too long ago. And now we see him against Ronovsky, hoping to make some inroads on the world scene. And a big friend of the channel, Michael McKinson, very, very talented. So we look forward to that. Um, Phoenix Cash comes back. He's putting his Commonwealth belt, not the British, up for grabs. So you can't expect a particularly good opponent in that one, I've got to say. Um, also, Cash Root, Tasha Jonas, um, both on the show, and Hopi Price. Yeah, week three is not great, um, to be fair. I said week two was probably the weakest, but that's that was based more on the undercard. It's still got a world title fight. I've kind of argued it with myself in the last minute or so. I think week three is probably the weakest. So it starts on a high and then kind of dips a little bit, and then dips a bit more for week three. But they're all good shows. I mean, I can't really complain. Each one has got at least one intriguing fight on it. Um, the zone for 199, and you can't really go wrong. It won't stay that price, of course. But for now, pretty happy with it. Um, the main concerns we talked about this on Monday is how the zone can attract the casual fan um, without the touch points of you know Sky Sports News and some of the other sports that Sky Sports carry. They maybe weren't doing loads in terms of cross-promotion in the way BT do. They cross-promote on the football. Um, as Andy Clark mentioned on Macklin's Tate recently, they used the big football game to highlight Daniel Dubois against Bogdan Dinu. And the zone don't really have the ability at the moment with their portfolio of UK sports to do similar stuff. But there'll be other ways of doing it. And I believe a deal to um, show highlight packages of the zone shows, uh, matchroom shows, is imminent um, on a free-to-air terrestrial channel, as Eddie Hearn confirmed on Monday. Um, sources, Mike Coppinger nod there, sources tell me it's the BBC. Um, so I think that will help in, a long, in the long run. Uh, but yeah, looking, looking forward to Fight Camp. And um, obviously what I want to know from you guys is, A, how happy are you or not with the Fight Camp schedule as a whole, the three shows? What, what would you give it out of 10? 
um, yeah, for the whole three as a, as a thing. And which is your favourite fight out of all of them? You know, we're talking about 15 maybe confirmed fights so far. Which one are you most looking forward to and why? So it's fight camp as a whole, mark out of 10 for 2021. And which fight out of all of them so far confirmed are you most looking forward to and why? Let me know. I'll respond to some of the comments. Meanwhile, I will be back on Monday for reflections, uh, probably reflecting on some of the fights I've shamelessly ignored in this vlog. What can you do? Um, 4.30 p.m. And then next week, Thursday, same time, I'll be uh, doing Flex Expectations again, of course, which is the preview show. Thanks for your time. It's quite a long one this week, um, as the actress said to the bishop. And I will be back uh, soon. And thank you for your time.